All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, we're gonna to be going over the new cameras that Synology has come out. They have come out with their own line of security cameras, and it's two cameras, but really it's the same camera twice, essentially the same sensor, same package, just in two separate form factors, a good old turret and a bullet form factor. Pretty much what you would expect, but this is their first entrance into the security camera market. This right here is the TC500, and this is the BC500. And as I said earlier, they are essentially identical cameras, just in two different form factors, which is nice to have the two different options. A turret camera like this is really useful if you ever need something that's vandalism protection. So this is actually the only difference between the two cameras from a specs perspective other than a form factor perspective is that the turret version actually has IK10 impact resistance, which is essentially vandalism protection. It can get hit pretty hard and still be working. And so that's why you really want a turret. They are less flexible and harder to deploy a lot of times just because you've got a, you don't have as much range of motion and things like that but you do have that extra vandalism protection because it's way harder to break something like this than a bullet camera, which is the only difference between these two devices. And overall, I think these are a great first attempt at a security camera from Synology. I am really glad to see them getting into the security camera market, specifically producing their own. They have probably one of the best security camera softwares out there, Surveillance Station, Basically, the software that allows you to turn pretty much any Synology NAS into a NVR for cameras is one of the best out there, in my opinion, for massive deployments and really going for those enterprise level deployments and having tons of cameras and just a lot of options while also being able to really easily also be a NAS. It's great. One of the biggest issues is, especially if you don't have a ton of time and you don't really know what you're doing, Setting up third-party cameras always just takes extra time. Up until now, Synology did not have that first-party integration that just allowed you to easily plug it into your network and immediately get it linked up and be going. Instead, you had to use third-party cameras, which is one of the best parts about Surveillance Station is the massive flexibility, but it also meant that setting up any individual camera, especially once you started including AI in there for things like detections, just made it much more complicated because you start having to go back and forth between the actual Synology page and the actual camera page, and you have to do that for n number of cameras. It's not the worst thing in the world, especially for something that's just gonna be there forever, but it's really nice having a first party option that just is plug and play and really easy to set up. And I'm actually gonna go through the setup process for this guy right here, and it is incredibly easy, which is very nice. All right, and so before we go any further, I did wanna give the quick disclaimer. Synology sent me both of these two cameras. I do believe I have to send them back. They don't get to see this video or anything like that. I reached out and asked for them. No money's changing hands, no nothing. And this is a completely independent review, as are all of my reviews. All right, so now let's go ahead and go over stats and price. And I'm just gonna do this once because they are identical, other than the fact that this guy right here has IK10 impact resistance. So. These are both five megapixel cameras, which I actually think is probably the sweet spot for security cameras. 4K video just takes up a lot of extra space and really, especially with these sensors and things, you don't really get that much more clarity and actual visualization. Instead, you're just taking up a lot of extra space, which you probably could have done better by just using better compression settings. And so I think five megapixels is probably one of the best on there, at least until we get better sensors and better lenses out there. So they are five megapixels all the way up to 30 FPS. 30 FPS is also one of those things that's a bit overkill. Normally 10 frames per second is a good sweet spot for the combination of storage and also being able to see what's going on. The one time that 30 FPS and kind of higher frames per second really comes to it is when you're trying to use AI features, those often need more and more frames and lower exposure times. And so having 30 FPS for that can be useful, but if you're deploying most things and you're doing on-camera AI, you'll want to just set it to probably 10 frames per second, unless you're trying to catch cars driving by. When you're setting up security cameras, you're not trying to shoot a Hollywood film. You're trying to be able to identify what has happened. And that is where 10 frames per second, in my opinion, is a good sweet spot. They will shoot in either H.264 or H.265 video, which is awesome. There is no limitation between the two of them. A lot of other cameras, you can say, all right, I do use H.264, but if you use H.264, now it's a way smaller frame and you get less settings. H.264 and H.265 essentially have identical settings. 
So you can choose the same resolution, same frame rate, same everything between those two, which is very nice. H.265 is going to be more space efficient, which is great, but it does require playback on either a phone using the app or using the desktop program for either Windows or Mac OS. And so that's the one limitation when you're using H.265. I've started deploying H.265 pretty much everywhere because you do get a lot better compression efficiency. And so you just get more video for less storage, which is great, but you just have to download and use the desktop app to be able to see H.265 footage in browser. It's identical to the actual one that's in your browser. They look identical, they have all the same settings. It's just, it actually allows you to use your GPU and a few things a lot more efficiently and see that H.265 video. So that is great. The audio quality is actually really solid on them. So they both have inbuilt mics and it's actually usable for hearing things, which I was surprised by. They're both powered by either PoE or DCN and they did not include either a PoE injector or a DC power supply in the box, which I think is a bit of a miss. If they had not included the extra DC barrel plug, then I would not have been complaining because it's very common to have a PoE switch. I just honestly wish they did not even have the DC out right here and instead just assumed PoE because these extra cords on here are really annoying to have to deal with and it just looks ugly and you can't basically hide them as well when there's two things. And if you're not going to include a DC power supply in the box, are we supposed to go out and buy our own super long DC cables? It just does not make a ton of sense to me. So I wish they would have just completely not included the DC barrel in, or if they're going to include a DC barrel in, add the DC adapter because those are very hard to come by. A PoE injector would be nice, but for the market Synology is going for, for these things where you have a bunch of the cameras, you're just gonna have a PoE switch anyway, so it's not too big of a deal. They're actually pretty low power draw at only five watts, which is great. So you can use standard PoE and also you're probably not gonna be maxing out your PoE switch. They also have some pretty good night vision with the IR illuminators that works really quite well. And one thing that they did do well was they have edge recording. So one nice thing that you can do with these things that is just super easy because it's built directly into DSM, though it is available through surveillance station on other cameras, you just have to kind of set it up and find the right compatibility there, is you can do what's called edge relay recording. So what that means is there is a micro SD card slot up here that essentially you can put a micro SD card in and then if for whatever reason the NAS is unaccessible, so maybe there is an update, maybe the server room goes down but the PoE switch is still up, anything like that that happens, the camera will still be recording all that footage directly to the micro SD card. Obviously, if your PoE switch goes down, the camera has no power and can't power itself, so that will not work, but as long as it has power, it will continue to record. Then, whenever the NAS comes back up, it's simple. It's just gonna go ahead and say, oh hey, this is everything you've missed. As soon as the camera sees the NAS again, it's just gonna start offloading all that footage from the X number of hours that it was down. And so that way you don't miss any footage just because there was a software update and you had to reboot the NAS, which is a really nice feature that is just directly built in and having it first party makes it really easy to set up. Then both the cameras are IP67 water resistant, which means they're not waterproof, but they'll go through a fair amount of water and still be okay as long as it's not dunked or anything or just like sitting water on top of it for a long period of time should be fine. And so the ethernet jacks on them do have the ability to create that watertight seal and all the supplies for that are in the box. And so these are really designed for outdoor deployments as well. So across the board, they're pretty flexible and pretty much exactly what you'd be expecting out of a system like this. The last thing that is worth mentioning is the fact, and it's printed right on the box, they are NDAA and TAA compliant which is something that means probably nothing to the vast majority of businesses, but it starts mattering when you've got DOD projects and also just government projects, you start having to have these restrictions. And so these are limiting basically what can be deployed at US facilities and US contractors. Basically it either matters to you or it does not for the most part. And these are both compliant and they made a big deal about all their NASAs are also compliant with both of those. And so that is important for very few deployments, but where it is useful is just knowing that you never have to worry about that if you're doing just like super standard deployments for massive clients and you just need to be able to check that box. 
that's really what it is there for. And I guess for some people, it can also be peace of mind. All right, and so now the last thing we need to talk about before we go into actually checking out these units and all their capabilities is price. They are not out yet, I do not believe, but their MSRP is 220 US dollars. And that is putting it somewhere in between the cheaper end of nicer cameras and the expensive end of cheaper cameras, kind of straddling that line. And Synology will point out that, hey, these don't require a surveillance station license. So every NAS comes with two free licenses for surveillance station, except for the NVRs that come with more. And then after that, every additional camera you want to add is $50. And so they try to say, oh, it's $50 cheaper. While that is true, surveillance station licenses are perpetual. And these are not licenses, so they are not perpetual. So I wouldn't say it's fully $50 off but that. It's $50 off your first appointment. And then after that, every subsequent deployment, if a camera goes bad or you want to replace them for newer models or anything like that, that license is not perpetual because it's not a license. It's just not required. And so it's not really $50 off, though it is nice to have. So these are very clearly kind of marketed towards businesses, but businesses who just want a streamlined approach. And that is really what they are going for here. And I think they've done an overall pretty good job. I also think that these cameras will be able to compete with the Unifies just because they are going to be a good bit cheaper than a lot of the Unify cameras. And they also do have the very streamlined approach. And that's what I was really tr having trouble with back in the day was because there was no Synology first party cameras, the deployments were a little bit trickier just to get it done for people who don't want to spend a ton of time with stuff. And so I was often recommending Unify because, well, you just have a completely vertical integrated ecosystem where you just have everything running on there and it's easy. Now that Synology has the first party stuff and they are super easy to deploy, it is really nice. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and pop this thing on open and we're going to go ahead and set up for the first time in Synology DSM and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do. All right, so I've just got my Ethernet jack with PUE on the other end. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug her on in. And then we're going to go ahead and open up Surveillance Station and see how easy it is to go ahead and set up. All right, so I've just plugged her on in and there is a blue light flashing there. I'm actually gonna turn this so it, you can see that. And so now we're gonna go ahead and open up Surveillance Station and just see how easy they are to grab in. So we're just gonna go into IV cameras. And even before we've done that, we just instantaneously see, hey, we are ready to add in this BC500. I did not have to click on anything. All I had to do was have Surveillance Station open and it found it because it's on the same network, which is just super easy, very much like the Unify system, which is just gonna make a lot of people's lives a lot easier, especially for larger deployment and you just want it to work. So we just hit add now and it's pretty straightforward. You just give it a name and stick the storage where you want it. And they do have those massive, massive abilities to deploy tons of cameras at once with the batch management. Now it's automatically going to force us to change the username and password by setting these for the first time, which is great. A lot of time, especially back in the day, even today, sometimes if you log into like a coffee shop's Wi-Fi network and just scan for security cameras, you may be able to get in with the default credentials because so many people just don't think to change those but this does force you to do it. And just initialize it. Now, you've got the ability to just copy over the settings from another camera, which is really useful if you've already deployed a ton of them and you're just like, hey, I need the exact same thing. Or we'll go ahead and do the complete setup. And then there's also the quick setup that just kind of works. You get to choose what format you want in the video. I'm gonna do H.265 because we're using the surveillance station app and it's gonna give us better compression. And we'll drop the frame rate down to like 10, 15 frames per second. And we'll just do a bit rate control of variable, more efficient generally, and image quality of four. We can also set it to five to get really pretty. And this allows you to set up two different modes. So you could use high quality to record 
whenever there's a motion event or something like that. And then balanced a lower frame rate and lower overall picture quality for when nothing's happening. So if the camera says, hey, there's no motion, there's no people, we'll just use the lower resolution recording so you still have it if you need it, but it doesn't need to be the as high of resolution because nothing's going on. We'll leave high quality all the time. And now you've got your basic recording options. So there is the pre-recording before and after an event. So as soon as an event is done, and we'll get to that on the next page, you get to choose how long it records everything and how long you would like to keep the files. Or you can say, I only want to keep the files X amount of size. And we will set it to Eastern time. And for motion detection, we will use by camera, which is the inbuilt AI. Though I believe if you had a NVR, one of Synology's actual AI incorporated NASes that is specifically for NVR, you would be able to use that as well, but we will use by camera. And we're just going to be continuous recording. And now it's just done. Another really useful feature about this is it's got automatic updates. So you can see as soon as we added it in there before it showed up at all, it said, hey, there's a camera update for this. And so now it's going in and it can pull an update and you can also manually do one over here and edit once it is actually done. We'll go ahead and just wait for it to finish adding in. And now it is back online. One just thing to point out is by default, we didn't have to configure anything. Don't think we had any other option. It is using 443 HTTPS. So it's also encrypted on network just by default. Now we can pretty easily see everything and just pull her on up. Just like that, pretty clear vision. And all of that good stuff. I also wanna pull out and see some of the other recordings I've had with the other machine, because it actually has really good AI detection, though I do still think Synology's trying to figure out how to make it easy to actually see people and things like that. It's stuck in the recording section, which is kind of odd to me, but we can go in right here and we can just see, this is back with the other unit. We can see it saw me get up and it just saw me as a person, me setting up the camera. And it also works at not even a complete frame. This is not too hard of a shot for them, but you can see it's quite small in the frame and it was able to detect me though it did wait until I came through the actual thing. So there, were, there was stuff in front of me that great. So it's not perfect. And we can start to see when it finally detects me. Once again, this could be better. This could be a little bit further, but given the fact that it's not my full body in frame, I would not expect that to be on there. It's also got motion detection and other things like that. And then you can just see the full recording. Pretty much everything you would expect out of this unit. There's a couple of other useful settings in here that are just nice to have. It's actually got some pretty good ability to actually adjust the image and things like that. Everything you'd more or less expect from it. So if you're having trouble with flicker, you can change that. Basically, if you have lights that are on the same frequency as the camera, you may see some weird stuff. And so you can actually give it a lot of stuff and also add a privacy mask. This essentially means that the camera will not remove this mask and it will essentially be added before it ever goes on there. You have the ability to either have it a fake mask or a real mask. Fake mask basically just shows up on there so you don't see it unless you need to. And then an unremovable mask cannot be removed. It's set into the recording every single time we do configure it, there is a blip there that takes a while. I wish you could kind of batch update things like that, but that stuff is still getting worked out. You also have inbuilt IP filtering, so you can actually go through and only allow specific IP addresses to even be able to access the camera and just really limiting stuff right out of the box just like that and even having auto block. Then if we go down into event detection, we can start setting thresholds and a lot of very useful settings here on exactly what area you want to be able to detect in. So say I know there's often just random stuff that's unnecessary over here on the right hand side. I can actually just mask that out and say, hey, I do not want to trigger motion detection on that side of the screen just because there's a bush that's flying side to side. Things like that. 
people in video, it has actually some really useful stuff in here about what kind of rules you want. So for most people, you'll probably just detect all people. But if it's an area where people are often walking and it's not that useful for you, you can start saying only when you have occupancy that reaches five people, or even if somebody hangs out in the same area for more than 10 seconds. So there's a lot of useful stuff here and the vehicle detection actually works. I'd say it's not as good as the people detection, but it does work. And then there is also intrusion detection. So you can basically draw a fence for, hey, anytime a person crosses a specific threshold, and this is not gonna work great for this shot. Anytime a person crosses one way or the other, and you can set that by detection direction, it will actually send a special option. And so there's a lot of configuration and it's actually got very good on-camera AI. On-camera AI is great because you don't have to have a lot of costly processing power on the actual NAS. Instead, it's kind of farmed out to each of the units specifically. If we go in the maintenance section, automatically syncs time. And you also can do a firmware update right here and all of the first party integration stuff that you would expect. One other thing I did want to mention is it's quite nice. By default, there is no Synology branding on here. That is just something I wanted to mention because if you look at most other cameras, by default, you'll see their logo in the lower right hand corner. That is just not something that looks great for business and things like that. And so it's just nice that by default that is not even there. I wanted to give props for that because I wish more and more cam camera manufacturers would not put their watermark by default in the lower right hand corner. Most of them do let you remove it, but it's just nice, nice to not even have it there at the beginning. Overall, I think they did a very good job with kind of their first pass of the cameras and it just ends up working out quite well. And I'm excited to see more and more stuff come on here. I would like to see a cheaper, maybe non AI version that can also be deployed. That's just a little bit cheaper just because I do think there's a good price point there. I don't think they should start getting into PTZ for a little while, maybe zoom, but that stuff ends up becoming very expensive and very niche. So I do think they start in the right direction and I'm very happy that it is there. And finally you have these first party integrations for people who are looking for that, who to be able to just integrate everything under one specific version. And that's going to be it for this review. Go and leave any other questions you got for me down in the comments below. And if you want to hire me for a project, I've got a link for that down in the description below. All right, have a good one. Bye.